Hello my friends, I'm Luke Neller and you're watching Best Replays of the Week. I've said that 10 times now, which means it would normally be time to finish the season and take a breather. But there will be no break. So to celebrate the anniversary, we've prepared a musical surprise for you. Make sure to watch it. Enough small talk, let's start the warm-up. We start warming up on the highway. A platoon of two E25s behave like an old married couple from the beginning. The tanks separate and get back together. They even have a fight. They don't seem interested in their team dying without getting any kills. They know that simple plans are the best. They drive into the heart of the enemy's lair, wait until the enemy can already taste the victory and then take it away by capturing the base. The score is 0-13, but the lovers are victorious. This is so cute. And we move on. The warm-up continues in Himmelsdorf, where the amazing Trek Circus has come to town. There are no tigers or lions, but the ISU-152 and the IS are going to put on a performance for the only remaining spectator, the T-3485. Let the show begin. In the first act, the ISU massively demonstrates how to not penetrate a soft target from two meters away. The audience is not impressed. But there's more. Take a look at the Benny Hill style chase number. It runs a little too long and the actor isn't that good. Maybe it's time to ask for a refund? The warmer concludes on Kamari. Throughout the whole battle, the American M40 M43 follows the basic game plan to the letter. Support stuff and get kills. You know, the standard artillery stuff. Nothing out of the ordinary. But the real fun starts when both bases are being captured at the same time. At this point, you should imagine a World War II propaganda poster saying, what are you willing to do for victory? The RT drives forward, puts out the fire and sacrifices itself by resetting the cap at 99% an act worthy of your respect. That's it for the warm-up, let's move on to the main event. The Top Gun of the Week goes to the call sign Friendship, and he's driving an M4 Sherman. Remember how we once showed you a shot at the windmill for luck? This time it's almost the same, though it's the M4 who gets shot instead, and it has nothing to do with the windmill, the rest is the same. Anyway, the lucky charm starts working right away and his first shot turns an enemy artillery into scrap and it's only the beginning. Like a Native American brave, the shaman takes the enemy scalps whilst his allies fall one by one. The remaining allied bishop is unlikely to do much good, so the American is basically alone against seven opponents. No matter, seven kills done, seven more to go. An encounter with his evil twin goes well. A shot to the track causes just 14 points of damage. After the Sherman duel, a Stuart is more of a gift than an opponent. A few seconds, and the M5 is sent away to replay the tutorial. The B1 manages to land a few shots, but is dispatched just as easily. It would be a good idea to fall back, but the M4 is just too noble to watch an Allied get bullied by the T-34. Two precise shots into the turret, and the Soviet unit turns from a tank to a smoking memorial. The Allied RT blows up, and almost immediately the base capture siren starts to howl. The sound is somehow appropriate for Ruhrenberg on fire. Anyway, the invading T-28 tries to run. Not so fast. Twelfth kill, but there are still two more enemies. The next one isn't hard to find. The KV-1 seems to have forgotten how to shoot straight, and so becomes another victim of the Sherman. Maybe he's got too nervous, or just consider the asphalt his real enemy. Who knows? And the final act of this one-man show is provided by the SQ-122A. His tactics are a little strange. He is trying to merge into the house. You'd probably need three camouflage nets for this to work. An easy 14th kill seals the hard-earned victory and brings the player named Friendship, Fame, a fortune in gold, a medal and the title of Top Gun of the Week. Congratulations! The steel wall of the week goes to the player named Devon driving his KV-5 Soviet Heavy. He appears on Komarin and immediately heads towards the island at the center of the map, along with half the team. As it happens, the enemy has decided to do the same, and so the massacre begins. 
Our future award winner is as cool as a cucumber. He just isn't impressed with the enemy shells at all. The IS-6, the KV-1S, and many others try to pierce his thick Soviet hide from the side, but with no success. Allies and enemies die, positions are changed, the sun goes up and down, children are born and grow up. But one thing doesn't change, the hit point total of this seemingly indestructible KV-5. A couple of enemies finally manage to do some damage, but they can't really affect the battle's outcome. I get the feeling that even the radio operator is laughing at these pathetic attacks. In all fairness, it must be said that the enemy do come very close to blowing the KV-5 up in the end. It doesn't matter though, even 55 HP are enough to carry his team to victory. A pile of medals, more than 15,000 points of potential damage, and the well-deserved title of Steel Wall of the Week. Congratulations! For a Sniper of the Week, it has become a tradition to show you a hit parade of three great shots. For the first one, we'll travel to Westfield. By the end of the battle, the enemy SPG is alone, and decides to end it all by jumping off the bridge. The Waffentrager, Alf Panzer Fier, notices the suicide attempts, and decides to give his enemy a proper Viking funeral. It looks like his marksmanship is perfect, without even needing to aim, and the falling enemy is turned into a spectacular flaming wreck in mid-air. A great shot, and a memorable ending for the match. The silver medal in this category goes to another product of the German tank building industry, the Jagdpanzer E100. Are there people in this world who like cockroaches? There probably are, but the star of this video isn't one of them. A sneaky T-54 has vanished from sight and is starting to get on our tanker's nerves. He's just asking to be crushed by a metaphorical slipper, through a hole in the building, above the dead IS-8's gun, and right into the commander's hatch. What a great shot! And finally, this week's top sniper drives the Crusader SP. You know how you should avoid breaking things when you're trying to stay hidden? It seems like the enemy SU-100 has forgotten about it. A true sniper only needs a glimpse of his prey. The victim has been spotted and the hunt is on. He follows the trail of broken buildings and fences. A bit to the right, and now a little to the left. And shoot, it's a hit. The SU-100 is sent to study the basics of stealth and safe driving, and the hunter becomes the best sniper of the week. Congratulations. This week's best defender goes by the call sign X331 and he's driving the Borsig. It's common on Westfield for the forces to clash in the village, and the Borsig heads there as well to help his team. At some point he starts to think that the emptiness on the other flank can't be a good thing. And it's not. The opponents have gotten to the base and started the siren party. Not on my watch, says the German. He sends the Tiger 1 to a better and less hostile place called the garage, and the steward quickly follows. The annoying red bar is put out of the picture, but life hasn't got much easier given that the score is 7-12. The enemies have surrounded the base and are rubbing their hands in anticipation of an easy victory. It's time to show them who the victory belongs to. The Borsig's gunner is an expert at setting explosive fuses. It's time for the enemy to know fear. First, the T-43 is surprised to find out that he's a one-shot kill. The ELC follows in the same explosive fashion, and that's not all. The third shot sends a fully intact IS-3 to the garage, where his teammates have already started the Safe Stowage fan club. The lesson on how to turn the tide of battle with three shots has been taught. The Panzer S-5 hasn't yet realized that the odds aren't in his favor anymore and attacks the allied AT-7. Tradition demands that you don't leave comrades in trouble. But as the Borsig saves the day, he is hit from behind. Actually, it barely counts as a hit and is more of a desperate push. All that's left to do is to go and pick off the remaining M12 as an added bonus. And we are the ones who got the real bonus. Incredible luck, added to great skill and tactics bring X331 the title of Defender of the Week. Keep it up! And now we get to the main award. The honourable title of Best Replay of the Week goes to Godzayak. Together with our star player, we travel to a high position on Nihaluf. Not a very precise description, but I think you got me. This is a good position for helping allied heavies climbing uphill. Two piles of scrap that used to be enemy tanks a moment ago demonstrate this point. No kills here, but that doesn't matter. Shots from an enemy artillery unit doesn't scare the American, but he decides to climb down from the cliff. His timing is excellent. 
stopping the cap and sending the Yak Panther 2 back to the zoo is a great result. The developer approves. The American continues supporting his allies and unloads another drum into the AMX M445. The hostile T3485 tries to take advantage of a moment of vulnerability during the reload. Really? Skilled maneuvering leaves the Soviet combatant with no chance for victory. A finishing shot on the Yag Panther is good, but receiving a hit to the fuel tank from an IS-2 is less so. Not good at all. He decides to postpone the dismantling of the Chinese tank for later. A little detour lets him reload and plan for a new attack. The last remaining ally switches over to post-mortem mode and the ARL 44's turret just doesn't want to get penetrated. A close encounter with the thick-headed Frenchman ends in our star player's favor. No time to relax! A lucky turn and the T-69 narrowly avoids massive damage from an artillery strike. This was the last shot this SVG will take. And now only two enemies remain. He goes looking for danger and before long danger finds him. It's not just any danger, it's his old Chinese adversary. Now it's time to settle this. Taking cover behind a rock, the American greets his enemy with a thunderous drum solo. Now things are getting ugly though, as he realizes he's down to two shells. Shot number one sends the Chinese heavy to the garage, and almost instantly, the end boss appears. The main villain of this battle, the IS-3. One shell, one enemy, one chance for victory. A steely-eyed look, careful aim, and yes! The shot named after Alexander Faden brings a long-awaited victory. This rare display of skill and luck brings the player Godziak Gold, a special medal, and most importantly, the title of Best Replay of the Week. Congratulations! Don't forget to watch the other shows from Wargaming TV. Also, feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss a single episode. And that's not all I have for you today. As I promised, there's a little surprise. Do you remember the Waffentrager song from episode 7? We decided to go further and make the whole video for this track. And that's it for now, for real this time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. There is an English. The Waffentraga opens up. <coughs> Whoa. Waffen trigger, waffen trigger, track a track a track a track a waffen trigger, waffen trigger, track a track a track a track a waffen trigger, waffen trigger, waffen trigger, waffen trigger, waffen trigger, waff, waff, waff. The Englishman charges as fast as he can. The remaining shell strikes rocks, fires, greedy eyes, three lets his whole team down, and we hope that he was reported and is getting a ban. Waffen trigger, waffen trigger, track a track a track a track a waffen trigger, waffen trigger, track a track a track a track a waffen trigger, waffen trigger, waffen trigger, waffen trigger, waffen trigger, waff, waff, waff. There's no umlauts in English. Thank <laughs> you.